Welcome back again, you guys, to another episode of BSPN and our Toronto and Battle of Texas wrap up. Before we get into it, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. Show this channel some love so we can bring you some more content weekly. All right, let's get into it. We got two shows to review tonight. And as always, if you would like to come work with me, suitsandposing.com is where you have to go. We do hair, makeup, suits, and posing, all of the fun stuff when it comes to competing. Um, tonight we are going to talk about Toronto and we are going to talk about Battle of Texas. We're going to start with Toronto um, and we're going to go into it very briefly. I did not purchase the live stream for this particular show um, like we talked about with the preview. It's a tad expensive and from what I've heard, from what I've heard it wasn't the best, it wasn't the best quality in the world. Um, I did get a few little snippets and stuff sent to me. Um, our lovely Andrea did win the fitness portion of the pro uh, pro portion of the Toronto Pro. So she is qualified for the Olympia, which is amazing. Um, and she also qualifies for our Pro Performer Promise. So if you guys don't know what that is, if you're new here, um, if you win a show and win your pro card or you qualify for the Olympia while wearing our suit, you then become a sponsored athlete for the remainder of your career. So we have had a lot of Pro Performer prom Pro Performer Promise winners this year, which is awesome. And Andrea is one of them because she was wearing our suit uh, when she won the fitness por portion of the Toronto Pro. So that's really awesome. And something that I mentioned about this too, um, actually uh, with Ben Weeder. So she placed third at the Ben Weeder. And if you guys don't know, uh, when it comes to qualifying for the, uh, for the Pro League in fitness, all you have to do is a routine round. You don't have to do a physique round. So it's not until you're in the pro league that you actually have to do a physique round, like, you know, quarter turns, things like that. So Andrea has, this is her, her rookie year. She's competed four times and this is only her fourth time ever doing quarter turns and an individual presentation. Um, so this was completely new to her going into this year. So um, I believe what she mentioned was that herself and the girl that took second both tied in the physique round and then she won in the uh, routine round. So routine round is two thirds of the score and physique round is one third of the score. So that brought her out on top uh, for the win here. So super excited because we already have somebody qualified for the Olympia for next year. So that's really awesome. And we're not even through this year yet. So congratulations again to her and uh, really looking forward to getting to design for her for the Olympia next year too. That's going to be awesome. So super excited about that. Um, now when it comes to reviewing the rest of the classes in this particular show, I'm going to touch on a few things, but not a whole lot because honestly, the pictures are super dark. Um, the lighting is not the best and <clears throat> I can't see a whole lot. So I'm not going to sit here and try to break down physiques and things like that because I really can't see a whole lot based on these photos. And like I said, I didn't get the live stream. Um, <clears throat> I've seen a few videos floating around and things like that of comparisons and individuals and things. So, um, you know, I can tell that in person, the lighting was fine. It's just that the actual photos that we see on NBC news online are really, really dark. Um, and it looks like the bodies all blend into the backdrop, which you can tell is not the case when you actually see a video. So, um, it makes it difficult to, to compare physiques and things like that, but I am going to touch on a few things. Um, first thing is that Cassandra did win wellness. Um, that was what we kind of expected was going to happen. There was only five girls total in the wellness portion. Now, again, we talked about this show when we were doing the preview. This show was a tough show because it was in Canada and they have a lot of restrictions when it comes to crossing the border um, and actually being able to compete and things like that. So the numbers at this show were not what they typically are for the Toronto Pro Show. Typically, this tends to be a really big show. Uh, but, you know, with the with the way our world is today, you know, there's just certain things that you can't deal with. You know what I mean? So, um, like, I know even Andrea had an issue with getting into Canada. She was, wasn't sure if she was actually going to be able to get in there, but she was. So, thankfully, she was able to do that. She was able to take home the win. So, um, you know, all of these classes were a bit smaller. And the majority of the competitors were actually Canadian competitors competitors and weren't a whole lot of people that tried to make that uh, make that trek across the border basically <laughs> so uh, but Cassandra did win this and in my opinion this from what I've seen from the photos this is an improved look over her last show which um gosh somebody help me out as far as what her last show was was it was it Texas San Antonio I know she competed in Texas um, but I can't remember if that was her last show I feel like there was another show in between there that I'm missing um, <clears throat> 
the last show that she was in, I can remember I mentioned that she was just looking a little soft. Um, she definitely tightened up for this show based on the photos. Based on the photos I'm seeing, she definitely tightened up, which really, really helped her um, in this particular uh, show. And I, you know, from what I'm from what I'm looking at, it was like it was like her and then like everybody else. You know what I mean? So um, this was definitely her win, her show. I thought she looked a lot better. Um, so it was Texas. Okay, okay. I thought she looked a lot better here. Based on, again, based on what I've seen, she looks a whole lot better here than she did her last show. So a really good job on that, um, coming back from that and all of that too. So tightened up, all of that looks really good. So she is now Olympia qualified. Um, you know, I'm guessing, and this is my this is my take across the board for everybody that won this show uh, I, in every division. I'm guessing each one of these girls and guys will likely be competing again next year prior to Olympia just because it was a very small show. So you wanna make sure that you get yourself in front of some real competition and get yourself some good feedback and you know what to do when you're going into the Olympia, that kind of thing. So while it's wonderful to qualify for the Olympia, it's awesome. You wanna definitely put yourself and put your feet against the fire, you know, once you get into the season next year, just so that you know what you are going to be up against when you get into the, get into the Olympia and everything as well. Um, the great thing about winning this particular show is now you can kind of sit back and relax and really pick your shows strategically so that you know you're going to be going up against competition where you're going to be at your best and you are going to be against people that are going to be at their best so that you can potentially move your way up when you get to the Olympia. That's the good part about qualifying at a show like this. Now you have no pressure, <laughs> right? Now there's no pressure. Now it's just a matter of picking your shows very strategically uh, so that you can make some waves and get into the Olympia, okay? So um, she looked great. Uh, there's a few things that I wanted to touch on with um, bikini. Now, I'm not going to go into figure because I, to be perfectly honest with you, I don't know any of these figure competitors at all. So, um, a lot of them are Canadian uh, and I do know that the girl that, that won it was a teeny tiny little thing. Uh, but I don't have enough, I just don't have enough footage. I don't have enough, uh, pictures and things like that to make any kind of educated, um, any, any educated statements basically so um if anybody does have the like video of call outs and stuff that you want to send to me so i can look at that would be great if you guys happen to have video of the call outs and you can send them to me and i can add that into the edited version for youtube i would totally do that i would totally do that but i don't like to, to, to comment on things that i haven't actually seen right so um Going into bikini, uh, Danny Phelps did win this. And again, that was who we predicted would be winning this show. You know, her show prior to this, she came in second to um, Laura Lee. So, you know, we pretty much assumed this would be her show. Um, I do for well. Awesome. Yeah, if you can send me that, that'd be great. If you can send me the, the wellness, I'll take a look at it. And if there's anything I want to add when I put it into YouTube, I'll do that. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, pretty much assumed this would be Danny's show. And, and it was, um, from what I saw from the photos, she looked great. Um, I could have seen her maybe being a little bit fuller, maybe, but again, I'm looking at photos that were really, really dark. So it's very possible that she was fine. Um, but just from what I'm seeing, I could have, could have stood to see some more fullness in the glutes and maybe in the, in the shoulders a little bit, that kind of thing. But she definitely was like, she was the winner for sure. Um, I'm trying to see, like, I'm looking at her photos right now. It's just so hard to see anything in this lighting. Um, like the backdrop and this lighting is, is like a brownish, yellowish, reddish kind of color. And that's the color that you guys are with your tan. <laughs> so you yeah, blend in real, real well in this, in this, uh, in these particular photos. So I'm trying to see if there's anything I can see that popped out at me. One of the things I will say, cause she did post some pictures on her Instagram and stuff too, is that I definitely like the blue suit better on her than the red. Um, in my opinion, I felt like the red just kind of blended in. The red that she wore was more of a burgundy kind of red and with her skin tone and her, her hair and things like that it was all just a little bit muted she needed a pop of color and um the photos that she posted on her instagram with this blue suit that was the that was the pop that she really needed in order to really accentuate her her um her whole shape and everything better so she didn't just look like one muted canvas kind of thing um i'm looking at it now and again they're just unfortunately these photos um now, one thing I'm, I'm interested, I'm curious about is her back pose because she has her toes out really, really far in her back pose. You don't see that very often. The only time I really see that kind of uh, placement in the back position is, is in wellness. So I'm curious as to why they chose to do that. I'm assuming that's the way that she's able to get her glutes to show the best because that's not a normal back pose position for those feet. 
So I'm guessing that that's why they did that this way, just because they, that's the way her glutes show the best. Um, so that tells me that she probably can stand to be a bit fuller in her glutes. Um, that would help her kind of probably pose this a little bit differently. I mean, obviously it worked for her. She won the show. So, you know, <laughs> she's doing all right. You know what I mean? Um, but I'd like to see maybe she just needs to fill the glutes out a little bit so she can pose a little bit differently. That's the one thing that I see here that could be, uh, that could be improved. Um, trying to see if there's anything else. I mean, that's the main thing. And like I said, it's really hard for me to, to, to judge anything on this stuff because of the, the quality of the photos on NBC News Online. So, um, but yeah, and like I said, I saw some videos of her and things and I really, really liked the blue suit on her, uh, in the video and in the lighting and all of that too. So again, if you're looking at the photos on NBC News Online, um, they are not true to what the girls actually looks like on stage. Um, and then a couple other things I wanted to note, um, Adair came in second. Now she's the one, if you guys remember me talking about her, she also placed top five at, um, at Ben Weeder. I believe she placed third, third or fourth. I think she was third. Uh, I actually at Ben Weeder could have seen her winning that show if she was a little bit fuller. She was just too lean. She was too hard. Uh, so it looks like to me that she filled out a bit here at this show and that really helped her. Uh, I mentioned that a few times that I actually felt like her structure was superior to the girl that, that won the Ben Weeder, um, Shanice, but that, that Adair came in too hard and that's what penalized her. Uh, so she came in a little bit fuller here and I think that really helped her here. I think that really helped her here in this show. Uh, so I think for her, it's just kind of a matter of a matter of time and figuring out uh, how her body functions best and things like that before she actually wins a show. Um, and with that, Shanice actually came in seventh, I think. Let me see. Let me go back to. I think she came in seventh. Who she she won the Ben Weeder. Um, yeah, Shanice came in seventh. And again, with the lighting, I can't tell, but it looks like she might have been still too soft. That was the ding that I had against her at um, at Ben Weeder. Like she has a phenomenal look to her and amazing glutes. But to me, even at Ben Weeder, I felt she was like a little bit too soft. So if she softened up even a little bit from there, then that's probably why she fell down to seventh. Um, again, I'd like to see better video to be able to tell exactly why. I can't see much in these photos, but that's just my guess. That's my guess from what I've been looking at. Um, Plus, she's up against some, some tougher competition here, too. Uh, looking. Yeah, it's just really hard to tell in these photos, guys. I'm going to say that 10, 10 more times before we finish up this, this show. These photos are really, really dark. They're really hard to see anything. Um, yeah, but I'm guessing that was probably the scenario. Again, if I saw some video, I'd be able to confirm that a little bit better. Um, and then another one that I wanted to touch on is Julia. Uh... Julia Schroeder, who took sixth. And this is what I mean by being a, um, a tougher show. Like this girl has actually placed top five several times before. Um, to me, in this particular uh, show, she looked a little bit flat. She looked a little bit small. Um, and she did the stallion pose, which I'm not, a, again, I, I, I like the stallion pose, but it can't be your main pose. I know she posed to the side and things like that when she was in her comparisons, but like the very first pose that she hit when she came out on that stage was that stallion pose. And I kind of feel like that should be like an ancillary pose that you stick in your back pocket, but it's not the first thing you show and it's not the last thing you show. You know what I mean? Because it is not the standard anymore. It's just not. Nobody does it anymore. Like, you know, Jen Ronziti will hit it sometimes. Um, Je Jessica Wilson will hit it sometimes. And they both hit it very, very well. But that's not their main pose. Whenever I see this girl posing, she's always hitting this as her main pose. So I just like to see her change that a little bit. Now, with that, I know why she's doing it. She has structure very similar to mine. She has very long legs. Um, and that's why I used to hit that pose all the time because I have really long legs and it helps to balance your frame out. And I get that. But when that's no longer like the really the standard of the division, you got to change. You have to. You just have to. Um, you need to add somewhere, someone to your payroll who can travel the shows to capture live footage like you would, right? So, right? I know, right? Um, you know, and, and unfortunately, like I said, with this particular show, I just wasn't going to pay $100 for a live stream. That's all. I bought the, the Battle of Texas. That one was 20 bucks. So we're going to get into Battle of Texas. I'm going to talk about that one because I actually watched the live stream for that one. 
Just saying. <laughs> But, um, yeah, but this is what I wanted to mention. I mean, this is a tougher, this was a tougher lineup than Ben Weeder, right? So this girl, I think she's got a ton of potential. She just needs to kind of update, update her look, update her look to fit the current standards when it comes to um, posing. So, I don't know. yeah, 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 yeah. We talked about it in the preview, uh, Jennifer. That's why I didn't, I mean, that's why I didn't buy it. <sighs> Anyway, <laughs> I mean, and like I said, I mean, you got to do what you got to do as a promoter in order to make money, but I think that they would have gotten a whole lot more people watching if they sold it for 20 bucks, like they did for Battle of Texas. Because I bought the Battle of Texas for 20 bucks and it was on all day long. So, I don't know. That's just, that's just me, my two cents talking on this kind of stuff. So, um, I would pay for an IP NBC subscription service, but we know not all shows are equal on live stream. Right, 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 right. That's the that's the biggest problem when it comes to live streams. Um, you know, there's just no consistency, and promoters are like franchise owners basically. So they run their shows how they see fit, and they have a sanction. So uh, there's just no way to kind of pull that into one. But I agree. I mean, I would I would pay for a subscription service too. We've talked about this before. I would totally pay for a subscription service for all the shows, you know. So maybe sometime in the near future, they could all kind of get together and figure something out that would work. Um, but it's hard when you've got a bunch of franchise owners that are these promoters doing the different shows to get everybody on the same page because everybody's got to buy into it. You know what I mean? And if one person doesn't and if their quality sucks, then everybody else suffers because of it. So it's, it's, it's definitely a difficult thing to maneuver when you're talking about that kind of stuff. Um, let's see. I watched Texas 2, LMO's reaction to I was like, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I know, right? Uh, I'm just saying, like... I don't know what else to say. <laughs> um, but yes, I would love to see a subscription service come about. And, you know, it wasn't until COVID that we really had uh, live streams of all these shows anyway. So now that we have all these live streams, maybe it's something the promoters can all kind of get together on. You know, we're, we're, we're progressing. We're getting there. So let's figure out something, you know. Um, and you're right. Not all live stream qualities are the same. So you got to kind of find people that you can, I, I guess, contract for each section of the country or something. And then when you buy into the membership you know, as a, as a, um, as a spectator, when you buy into the membership, you know, which promoters are on the roster for each section of the country kind of thing. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Um, the, I'm just saying, is there, <laughs> I know. I, <laughs> that's like my look. <laughs> uh, anyway, moving on. <laughs> um, so we're going to go over to Battle of Texas now uh, because this one did have a live stream. This one had great photos uh, and I did watch the live stream on this one too. Uh, and I'll be honest with you, based on what I saw, uh, what's, 100 seems like more than a ticket for the show. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we talked about that there in the preview. Mm -hmm. I got some on my teeth. Oh no, I thought something on my tooth. Sorry. <laughs> I'm like, I got distracted for a second. Um, anyway, um, going into Battle of Texas. I watched the live stream on this, and I gotta be honest, I actually had Alessia winning this. Um, Jennifer Ronziti did win, but I had Alessia winning this. Now, my thought process, again, I wasn't there in person, I was just on the live stream, so my thought process is maybe the judges thought she was a little too hard. Uh, that's definitely possible, but I felt like Jennifer Ronziti was too soft. So, I don't know, maybe they just decided to err on the side of soft versus hard. Maybe that's the way that, that they decided to go. Um, but I actually thought Alessia definitely won from the front. Uh, in my opinion, I felt like her, her proportions were best from the front. And you guys know, I've been really critical about Alessia's front pose. Uh, but I feel like the last couple of shows, she's really started to nail that front pose. Now, what I can say um, about Alessia is that the last, this, this show, she's competed a lot. Um, and she's kind of losing a little bit of oomph in her shoulders and in her glutes. So I can see that. I, I do see that progression over, over the show. So I can understand where that may have hurt her. Um, 
I was there and I thought the same. Yeah, I, I, I can, I mean, but you know, when I was looking at this lineup, I just really had her in first. Um, I just, again, I just felt like Jennifer was a little bit soft from the back. Um, her waistline's not quite tight enough and she still is not nailing that front pose. I know she's trying to do something different. This is different than what she did at the Olympia. Her front pose here is different than what she did at the Olympia. So I can see she's trying to fix it, but it's just still not quite there. And I think what would have made this front pose better in this particular show is if she locked out her front knee. Her front knee was bent. And because of that, it made her look a little straight up and down. If she had just taken that front knee and locked it, I think that would have popped her glute up and it would have made her waistline V in a little bit more. Now I could be wrong on that, but that's just what I'm seeing from what I, from what I saw from the photos and what I saw from the videos. Um, I can see she's trying, cause my, always my critique of her front pose was that she was pushing into it too much. So I could see she was trying to stand up tall here cause I'm assuming she must've gotten that feedback. So I could see she was trying to stand up tall here but I just don't think it's quite there yet. I think she needs to lock that front knee out. And if she can do that, I think that would put her in a better position on that particular front pose. Like even when you're looking at her in the front, like I'm looking at this group shot of the top six and she's, she's got a slight bend in that front knee. She just needs to boom, pop it out, lock it out. That'll help her glutes sit up a little higher and that will V her waistline in a little bit more. That's, that's my two cents. And you know, when I look at these two from the front, I look at Jennifer and and, uh, and Alessia from the front, you know, the, the one place I can see Alessia is kind of lacking in the shoulder a little bit. And again, that's probably just from her doing several shows back to back to back, but I still have her winning. I still have her in first. Um, and then uh, with Moss in third. So we're gonna start down at um, fifth and work our way up. So fifth was uh, Lana, Dunmark. And she actually just won her pro card. She won her pro card at um, at Ben Weeder, winning the overall there. Uh, so she came out on the stage, first pro show out, placed top five, which is fantastic. Here's what she has going for her. She is a gorgeous girl. I mean, beautiful. You know, it's one of those girls that when she walks in the room, you look at her. You know what I mean? So she's always going to get looked at. As long as she's in shape, she's probably going to do pretty well, right? Um, I'm not a huge fan of her front pose. I think there's a few things that she could do to tweak that. Uh, she needs to twist her hip a little bit, uh, let her arm relax down a little bit, you know, just some little tweaks and things like that would make that front pose pop on her a little bit better. From the back, she does need some more glutes, specifically upper and outer glutes in the back. Uh, she was she was tight, but she just wasn't quite, um, wasn't quite big enough from the back. She needs some more size in the back as far as up, upper and outer. Uh, but overall, she's, like I said, she's a gorgeous girl. So she's going to get looked at when she's on stage. Um, she's so beautiful. Yeah, she absolutely is. She is a beauty. Absolutely. And again, you know, that, that's something that's striking. As soon as somebody walks on stage like that, you're like, Ooh, who's that girl? You know, and she's that, she's got that factor going for her. So I really think if she takes some time to grow her glutes a little bit from the back and tweak her posing a little, she's going to be, she's going to be a threat. She's going to be a threat in some of these shows coming up next year. So that would be my two cents for her. Uh, other than that, I wouldn't change anything. I wouldn't change her look as far as her face, facial beauty, hair, all that stuff. I wouldn't change any of that. I just do a little bit of posing tweaks. Um, even her suit's fine. Um, posing tweaks and grow a little bit of glutes in the back and I think she'd be good to go. So yeah, really good start to her pro career though. That's a really good start to her pro career. <laughs> Like Edela, natural beauty, absolutely. Yeah, she's, again, one of those girls you just have to look at, right? Um, next, we have Marissa Wu. So this is um, this is the best Marissa's done in a while. I, if I remember correctly, I think she was um, top five at this show or a Texas show last year, or was it the year before? I can't remember. Um, but this is the best I've seen Marissa look in a while. Uh, my one critique on her back pose, I actually thought she had a really, really good back pose. Uh, she looked really good in the glutes. Of the top five here, I actually think she had one of the better back poses, but her hair was just a touch too long. I'd like to see her hair just like an inch, inch higher so we don't cut off the top of that glute. Um, there were some pictures here. Let me see if I can find one. I don't have her pictures up. I just remember from looking through it. But the, I remember seeing that on the live feed too. Um, when she would get into her back pose, it would just slightly brush and cut off the top of her glutes. So I just like to see that hair just a touch shorter, like like even just a half an inch shorter. And I think that would have made a difference. And I think it would have also helped to see her lower back a little bit better too, which would have made her look like she had a smaller waistline from the back too. Um, 
Let me see. Front pose is pretty good, but we can still stand to get, get some more glute pop from the front. She's a little bit um, upper body heavy here. So I wouldn't bring the upper body down because she needs the upper body in order to make her waistline look small. So uh, she just needs to add a little bit more glute pop from the front. Just a little bit extra size. Like when she gets in her model pose, looks great in her model pose. That's exactly what we want for the for portions from the model pose. Uh, but as soon as she gets into that front pose, we lose a little bit of that. So I just like to see a little bit more glute from the front. Here's a back pose, I found one. Um, let me see, yeah. It brushes just the top of her glutes, so it cuts off that, and it cuts off that roundness right there. So if we could just get that to just, again, just shave off like a half an inch from the back, it's good to go right there. Um, but yeah, I, I think she could have been a little bit fuller in the glutes overall. I think that if she can get some more fullness in the glutes, uh, cut that hair to touch, I think the poses themselves were where they needed to be. Um, I think the presentation itself was where it needed to be. We just need to see some more, some more glute, a little bit more glute. Not a lot, just a little bit to get her to pop a little bit more and cut that hair. So um, other than that, this was a really good po really good package for her. Really, really good package for her. Um, let's see where we are. We're at third. Hang on a second. I'm flipping through these photos and I don't lost my place. Okay, so third was Masa. So my critiques of Masa last week were that she needed to fill out a little bit. And she did. She filled out a little bit in her shoulders. Um, glutes need to fill out a little bit still. Uh, glutes were just a little bit. And again, this is where, um, this is where I think both her, you know, honestly, honestly, everybody in the top five, except for Jennifer Ronziti, need to fill out a little in the glutes. Everybody. Everybody. So, you know, that's where I think maybe, maybe that's why Jennifer got the win, because she was the only one that didn't need to fill out a little in the glutes. But. I actually thought this was an improved package on Masa this week. Um, let me flip her to the back here. Front pose, I can see the fullness in her shoulders and her front pose is better in this in this show than it was last time. Her hair is better. Needs to still brush it out a little bit, but this is better because it doesn't look like it was um, like it was messy the last time. Let me see, I'm trying to get a full on back, back pose here so I can look at it a little bit better. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. So the hair is definitely better here than it was last week. 100% better. Good. Uh, yeah. It just needs a little bit more glute pop. Just a little bit more glute pop. Um, just fill it out a little bit more. And again, I know, I know last year her critique was that she had too much glutes. So I'm sure that they're trying to be a little bit conservative uh, so that she doesn't get that critique again, but just needs to fill that out just a touch more. She's a really tall girl, just like myself. So just needs to fill out the glutes a little bit more. Um, I, but I could have had an argument for her in second and I could have had an argument for, um, Alessia in first. So yeah, let's go back to Alessia. Um, uh, interesting top five in Texas needed to fill out the glute game. Yes. The glute game. Absolutely. So again, I think that that, I, I mean, maybe that's where, you know, Jennifer got the win out is from the, from the fullness, right? Um, let's see. So we're going to go to Alessia now. I'm scared. <laughs> know, right? It's, 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 it's a game of, of inches here. It's a game of inches. It really is like, yeah. So, and, and again, I've been always been very critical of um, Alessia's front pose, but she's finally nailing it. And she did it here too. She nailed it here too. She pulled up. She was good. So she again is getting a little bit thin through the shoulder, a little bit in comparison to where she was even just last week when she won. But I still, I still think she's fine. I think, and again, if I hadn't seen what she looked like fuller when she won the last show, then I would think she was fine here. You know what I mean? I'm just comparing it to what she had the last show. Uh, she just needs to fill out a touch. Um, hair and makeup here looked good too. Again, that's another thing I'm always I'm always critical on with her, but um, hair and makeup looks good here. Uh, let's look at her back pose. And I do specifically remember her glutes looking like they were just a little bit downsized. And again, that happens when when you compete a lot. That just happens when you compete a lot. It's hard to keep that size on when you're competing week to week. Oh, I hit the wrong picture. Let me see. I want this one. Yeah. 
yeah, she just needs to be a little bit fuller. Just needs to be a little bit fuller. Because um, again, that fullness in the glutes, what that also does, not only does it give you that pop, but it also helps with the proportions. Like without that pop there, her waistline looks a little bit thicker from the back. With it, it doesn't look like that. So that fullness really makes a big difference. Jennifer, yes, we talked we talked about this with you on Sunday when we were talking about Ben Weeder. That's where you got to fill out. You got to fill out that, those glutes in order to get that, that round fullness, that pop from the back. It's hard. It's hard to get that. It's really hard to get that. So, um, but I think this was, I think that Alessi kind of found her look, her last show where she, um, where she won it. And if I was, if I was her, I'd probably take some time off just so that she doesn't run her body completely down. She's qualified for the Olympia now. Um, I, I just, I think that her look is there. Her suit, her tan, her hair, her makeup. She's finally got all those things, her pose, finally got all those things under, under control. Um, I, again, I don't have any critiques on any of those things this week. And I didn't the last week when she, when she won either. Um, but now it's just a matter of filling and rounding out, filling and rounding out. Um, but again, I had her in first personally after prejudging. So let's see. Do, do, do. And to Jennifer on CD. So we talked about this a little bit already tonight, but you know, I, again, she's another one I'm critical of when it comes to her posing and things like that. And I can see she's trying to change it and she's trying to make it better. And I'm always going to give people, um, a heads up or a hands up for, for the effort, you know, like that was one thing Ashley caught was for this past year. She massively improved her posing, you know, from one side of the year to the end of the year, you know, so I'm going to give people props for that. Uh, her front pose, like I said, is, is close. It's better. It's better than what she was doing where she was pushing. You can see she's standing up tall. That was my number one critique for her is that she was always pushing way too much in that front pose. She's finally standing up tall. So I really, really like that. Now, the last piece of that, I really think if she just locks that front knee out, it'll be right there. Right there. She's fine. Like, again, she's finally up tall. She got that waistline in nice and tight. You know, all of those things are in play. She's doing what she needed to do uh, in order to fix that pose. Now just boom, pop the knee. Be right there. Be right there. Um, Jen's always going to be one that has great glutes. She always compared really well with Angelica. Um, she's got good, nice, full glutes. And in my opinion, she was just a little too soft. If she could have been another pound tighter and pulled those hamstrings in just a little bit tighter, I think she would have been right on. And then at that point, I'd have been like, okay, she's the winner, 100%. You know? Um, but what I think happened in the judge's eyes, I think that they decided instead of going too hard, they decided to go too soft. There was nobody that was like right smack dab on the criteria. So I think they, they erred on the side of softer versus harder, which I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Um, you know, conditioning can get out of control in the bikini division really, really fast. Uh, it needs to be down the middle. It needs to be, it still needs to stay softer versus harder. So if they have to choose a direction, um, I, I'm okay with them going the direction of softer versus harder. This is something you got to understand that when you see these shows, sometimes this happens. Sometimes these girls show up and not any, not everybody, nobody on that stage 100% nails it. And nobody on that stage 100% hits the criteria. So they have to pick a winner. They have to. And it may not be who you think is going to win. It may not be your preference. It may not be what you think the criteria should be. But they have to make their best guess to get it down to the, the middle as best they possibly can. So I think that's what they did here with Jennifer. Um, I think... I don't know what her feedback was, but if I had to guess, I would guess they probably told her she needed to come in a little tighter. That's what I would guess. Um, and I think if she did come in a little bit tighter, then I would have had her in my first place position here. So I get it. I understand why she won. Um, it's not like, it's not like, oh my God, you know, Leslie got robbed. No, no, definitely not. Definitely not. It's just, you know, nobody fit right down the middle. So they got to pick one side or the other. Right. Um, and Jennifer was not qualified for the Olympia. So now she is. So again, the, that part of me, I always want to see somebody who is not qualified, get qualified. That's always something I want to see. So in that respect, I'm, I'm, I'm also happy with the fact that Jennifer won this particular show too. Now, again, as I, as I was watching prejudging, I thought Alessia had it, but I wasn't there in person. I was there on the live stream. So, um, there's a lot of things you can't see 
when you're not sitting there in the judge's seat. So always remember that whenever you're watching shows, right? Um, I don't know much about much, but that's the beauty of this sport. It's 109% subjective, like you've said time and time again. Yeah, it is. It's subjective. It's subjective. And again, we're trying to hit a magical criteria box, right? And nobody ever hits it. We're always just outside that box. So the judge's job is to find who has gotten closest to that box that day, who has gotten closest to that line and not gone over it, who's gotten closest to that line and not gone over it. That's a thing too, right? It's the full package. You know, I can sit here and say, well, Jennifer's glutes weren't tight enough. Well, yeah, but maybe Alessia's shoulders were too small. You know what I mean? Like there are things on both sides that are pluses and that are minuses. And it's just a matter of how those pluses and minuses come together in order to create that, that score and who actually wins that day, right? Um, Jen looked great from the back, especially, but I honestly thought Alessia looked better from the front. Yeah, I thought Alessia, I thought Alessia looked better from the front, 100%. 100% from the front, I 100%. And again, go, going from the back, um, you know, if, if Jennifer was a couple of pounds tighter, then I would have 100% given it to Jennifer. You know what I mean? But I, again, going back to that concept of you've got to, you've got to pick a side. And if it's going to be a matter of, okay, I, I'm going to go air on the side of too hard, or I'm going to air on the side of too soft. I prefer that they air on the side of too soft, because if you go too hard, then again, the criteria just creeps up way too quickly, way, way, way too quickly when you go too hard. So I'd rather than keep it, keep it down. Right. So that makes sense to me. That makes sense to me and I understand why they would do it. I get it. Um, any questions on, on anything that I've said, any of the, of the results from this weekend? Uh, we do have another pro show this coming weekend coming up, um, Atlantic States. Um, I don't know if they, I don't think they have the pro list out yet, but I'll take a look when they do and we'll do a preview for sure. Um, and you, ma'am, watching you this year has been incredible. And me speaking as a rookie. This week. Yes, and Angela, you did. You looked incredible this weekend. Yes, absolutely. So um, I was really, really happy with your presentation overall. It's come a long way, especially from uh, from the Ben Weeder show. Just from the Ben Weeder show alone, you really improved your presentation a lot. So um, kudos to you, Angela, 100%. Mm -hmm. Great job. Um, <clears throat> and thank you to Kelby, who's also here on this, on this live feed, too. She sent me some videos and... And was there front and center? Well, front and side, but you were there. <laughs> and got me some got me some footage. <laughs> so I appreciate you. Um, yeah, it's been an incredible year for all of us, really. It's been an incredible year. We were talking about this at uh, Sundays with Sean this past weekend. Like, it's been it's been a very fast year. It's crazy how quickly things have gone. Uh, but it's been a very very good year. It's been a very very good year. So, I think I was counting, and I think we had. It, I, I might have missed some. I think we had six or seven girls qualify for the Pro Performer Promise this year. Um, we had our first ever pros qualify for the Pro Performer Promise. So Devin qualified when she qualified for the Olympia. And now Andrea has qualified now because she's qualified for the Olympian Fitness. Um, prior to that, it's been all amateurs that have, have actually qualified for that. So, um, so that was a pretty cool milestone for us to hit as well. So already going into next year, we now have have a fitness Olympian on the roster. So excited about that. We're excited to see what happens going into this coming year. Who else gets on that roster for this coming Olympia as well. Um, thank you so much. I had so much fun at this show. First time that I felt that he's good. That's good. Dear God, six amateur. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so the girls coming to Kitty's Cocker in the stage, we have, um, I think we have eight or nine, maybe more than that girls. Yeah, I think there's more than that actually coming to Cuties Car from the stage that have won the Pro Performer Promise of the course of, um, you know, the years that we've been doing it. So um, it's pretty cool to see that happen. It's pretty cool to see our community growing like that. Um, and it's just special. It's just fun. It's special. So um, I'm excited to see how many people we add on next year. And we still have opportunities this year. We still have nationals. So we have a handful of girls doing nationals that could all very well win their pro card. And if they do, we'll add some more on before the end of the year. I'm hoping to add on a few more before the end of the year. I think that would be fantastic. So I'd like to go out with, uh, so if we, let's just say we have seven. Let's go out with 10. <laughs> I don't think that will happen, but, but we can dream. We can dream with 10. 
<laughs> it's possible. It's definitely possible. So, um, and I kind of wanted to give Andrea a shout out too, because we were talking a little bit about her pro win and stuff too. Um, you know, she made a post about this. This is her fourth show that she's done in the pro league. And her first show, uh, she placed dead last in physique round. Um, and then almost dead last as far as overall. And then barely uh, broke out of that for the second show that she did. And then she went into Ben Weeder, placed third. And then she went into Toronto and won. So if that's not a story of perseverance and overcoming and speaking into existence and working your ass off to get to what you want, I mean, it's pretty incredible. That's pretty incredible. So I, you know, she sent me a video of her, her mom and, and everything like that, watching the live stream when she won. And I started tearing up because her mom was, was, was screaming at the TV and everything. And I just thought it was really special. That was really special. So, um, let's go nationals. Yes, yes, yes. Super proud of Andrea. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah, I'm super excited to see that. I, I we've never had a fitness pro on the Olympia stage yet. So now we do. So I'm excited. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a fun Olympia. Absolutely. Um, oh yeah, that was me last year. <laughs> yeah, right? Exactly. Yep. You got to believe in yourself, man. You got to speak it into existence. Karen's a good example. You know, came out with a pro show this year. Yep. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much again for tuning in and giving this channel some love. Make sure that you subscribe, like, comment, and share this with all your friends you think could benefit as well. Thanks so much. We'll see you again next time.